It's no secret that I love vintage science fiction films. I say vintage because I love both classics and stinkers. So when I made this trailer, I had Flash Gordon on my mind, a little Star Trek, Plan 9 from Outer Space, everything all mashed together. I live for this type of stuff. When it comes to the low-budget sci-fi films, I find humor in cheap special effects. It's ironic that it's meant to depict an advanced futuristic technology, but it's made with the least advanced methods you possibly can. Aliens are usually depicted as superior beings. We assume that because they have all this advanced technology, they must be highly intelligent. But what if they're just a bunch of idiots? I've had an urge to make this movie for decades. It's something I had to get out of my system. Past projects of mine, like Kung Fu Werewolf from Outer Space, were done without the convenience of computers and digital technology. They were shot on VHS and edited using two VCRs. In all the years since, there's been so many advancements. Now it's possible to use green screen, to add lasers and explosions. It's still very time consuming, even to make a special effect that's not convincing, but I now have the tools to bring these movie ideas to life. There's still the issue of time. It's taken about 15 years since the basic idea of doing a cheesy space war movie has been on my mind, and even then, it only became a trailer. It was back in the early 2000s when I first made two crappy model ships. Somehow they've still lasted, and out of pure tradition I used them in the final product, just to see an old idea through. Over the years, I've saved lots of junk. I see something and I think, oh, this looks like a robot, or this looks like a spaceship. Whenever I look at junk, my mind starts working. I'm sort of a creative hoarder. I like the idea of creating a science fiction world out of ordinary objects and spare parts. I like to give the audience the chance to notice what each object is. Production officially began in December 2014, when my friend Kevin was in town for the holidays. We shot a random scene for three trailers, including Jekyll and Hyde and Fuckernauts. The other one's a secret for now. Since then, it's been tough trying to find spare time to get these trailers done. Jekyll got finished in 2015, and Fuckernauts in 2016, two years after it was started. So it became all about finishing old business. Oh shit! Oh shit! Most of the work took place over a five month period. The title came before the plot. I just like the sound of it. Flying Fuckernauts versus the Astro Bastards! It's catchy, wouldn't you say? So finally, when I had the chance to sit down and write out the plot, I had to figure out who are the Fuckernauts and the Astro Bastards? Why are they fighting? What's the deal? So I decided to take it as literal as possible. Basically, the Fuckernauts go around the galaxy mating with every living being they see. Over the course of evolution, their descendants lose their vague alien shapes and become more humanoid in form, like the Fuckernauts. This would explain why in so many sci-fi movies, the aliens typically have a human shape. How would so many aliens from so many different solar systems all share the fact that they stand up on two legs, with two arms, two eyes, and so on? Is it just a coincidence? Or is something going around fucking the whole universe? And are we all descended from the Fuckernauts? Something to think about. Every generation of Astro Bastards has the same sexual encounters with the Fuckernauts. This would mean the Fuckernauts still have to procreate with their own race so that there would exist another generation of Fuckernauts to go along with each generation of Astro Bastards. Then I thought, I'm thinking way too hard about it. The trailer needs to be dumber. You'll notice a lot of other familiar faces, like Nathan, Kyle, and Doug. They got involved because usually we were filming multiple videos at once, and I'd say, hey, I have this sci-fi trailer, wanna be in it? A scene here, a scene there, and the trailer gradually got done. The special effects were the most time-consuming part. Every shot had some kind of special effect in it, and each one was a project in itself. Using strings to hang spaceships over a green screen may seem simple, but strings are a pain in the ass. The ships are all weird shapes, so it's hard to find something on it that you can tie the string to, and when you do, it's hard to make it the center of gravity, so the spaceship will droop down at an odd angle that you don't want. With the hubcap, it took about three different strings cut the same length to balance it out, and when you have multiple objects on strings in the same shot, 
they always get tangled together. Ever since Kung Fu Werewolf from Outer Space, I had an idea for a sequel where he realizes the full moon is what causes him to turn into a werewolf, so he decides to launch a missile at the moon to destroy it, and for no apparent reason, the moon bursts into blood and guts. The sequel never got made, but I never forgot about that idea. This was my chance to do it, but I had to figure out how. I didn't want it to be a digital effect, I wanted it to be something real. So I made a moon out of styrofoam, I fragmented it into four parts so it would be fragile. I glued it to a sheet of foam core with the help of Kyle, and we painted the foam core black to look like outer space and punched holes in it which we backlit to look like stars. The camera was on the floor pointed up. Then I made a concoction of fake blood, pasta, diced tomato sauce, and poured it through the back of the moon so it would break apart. The camera was protected by a sheet of plexiglass, but the cleanup was a nightmare. There is another long time gag that began on the set of the Angry Video Game Nerd movie. Lots of the crew and special effect people were all in on the joke. We wanted to see a movie where a giant ape destroys a city by humping it. We vowed that one day, in some form, we must see it through. While we never had the chance to all get together again and collaborate on it, I at least got to give it a big shout out at the end of the trailer here. The funniest moment was asking Mike, right before doing a playthrough of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, I asked him, casually, to put on an ape suit and fuck some buildings. To Mike, he didn't even think anything of it. To him, it was just another day at Cinemassacre. For sound effects, there's all kinds of cool things you could do. It's easy to get stock sound effects, but sometimes you want to record your own. During post-production of the Nerd Movie, I recorded myself hitting some springs with a hammer. It made this cool laser sound. For Fuckernauts, I wanted to get some of those genuine sounds you hear in vintage sci-fi films, so I got a theremin and messed around with it. And if you don't know what a theremin is, it's basically an instrument that you use without any physical contact. Pretty cool, isn't it? Flying Fuckernauts vs. the Astro Bastards is just a trailer. I have no plans to make it into an actual film. I have so many different ideas that will never see the light of day, so I find it best to make lots of them into trailers. In a way, when you're making a trailer to a non-existent film, you're not really making a trailer, you're making a short film. I really enjoyed this, I plan on doing more trailers and hopefully another feature-length film while keeping up with the web shows at the same time.